In this problem, we're going to find the area bounded by these graphs. So let's go ahead and work through this. So the hardest part will be to graph these two functions. So first, uh, note that the graph of 1 over 1 plus x squared, let's ignore the 6 for now. Say we had this. The general shape of this graph is something like this. You might say, how do, how do you know that? Um, I just have it memorized. It's something that you see come up uh, over and over again in mathematics. Likewise, if you just had uh, y equals x squared, the general shape is like a u. It's like a parabola. So putting these two together, we should have some points of intersection. So this is helpful. It's helpful to get a rough idea of what you'll expect. The next thing you should do, usually, is set them equal to each other to see where they actually intersect. So we have 1 over 6, parentheses, 1 plus x squared. And that should be equal to, let's go ahead and write this one as x squared over 12. So the reason I did that is so that we can use cross multiplication in the next step. So if you multiply this times this, 12 times 1, you get 12. And then this times this, that will give you 6x squared, parentheses, 1 plus x squared. Let's go ahead and divide by 6 really quickly because that will make it look better. So this is 2 equals x squared, so dividing by 6 here. 1 plus x squared. So 2 is equal to distributing the x squared. x squared times 1 is x squared. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. This is an equation of degree 4. It's called a quartic equation. So we should set it equal to 0 and attempt to factor it. So we have x to the fourth plus x squared and then minus 2, and this is equal to 0. So if this does factor, it's probably going to look like this. And so we need an x squared here, and then 1 here as well. Because what happens is, when you multiply x squared times x squared, you add the exponents that will give you x to the fourth. So we need two numbers that multiply to negative 2, so 2 and 1. One of them has to be negative and one of them has to be positive because the result is negative. But they have to add up to a positive 1, so that means that the 2 should be positive and the 1 should be negative. This factors further. This is x squared plus 2. And this is the difference of squares, x minus 1, x plus 1 and this is equal to 0. So then you're supposed to set each piece equal to 0. So let's go ahead and, and go through all of those steps. So x squared plus 2 equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0. And then x plus 1 equals 0. This is impossible. There's no real solutions here. If you try to solve this, you would subtract the 2 take the square root of both sides and that would give you imaginary numbers so that's no good so the two possible points of intersection are 1 and negative 1 all right now we're going to take what we know from above what we discussed above about the general shapes of these graphs and we can attempt to draw a decent picture i'm going to rewrite the functions here so we have them for convenience so we had f of x equals was 1 over 6, parentheses, 1 plus x squared. And then g of x equals, um, I think it was 1 twelfth. Yeah, 1 twelfth x squared. Good, 1 twelfth x squared. So 1 over 12 x squared. All right, so this will be the y-axis. And then this is the x-axis, so x and y. And our points of intersection are 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 1 here. And I'll put the negative 1 here. And it might be good to know like at what x value this happens. So if we plug in 1 or negative 1 into g, 
we're just going to get 1 12th. So we should make sure that we get the same thing when we plug it into f. So if you plug in 1 into f, you get 1 over 6, and then 1 plus 1, oh, yep, sure enough, 6 times 2 is 12, so 1 12th. Same thing with the negative 1, because it's being squared, so everything looks okay. So this y value here, I'll just put it here and here, is going to be 1 12th. It's not drawn to scale. All right. And then this one, I'll use, let's use a blue for the G, is a parabola. Okay, so it's going to look something um, like this. And it does keep going, so if you wanted to keep drawing it, you could. It would look something like this. And this one is the one that I said that looks like a little mountain. So I'm going to use a different color for that, for our little mountain. So it's going to look something like this. If you're wondering how high this little mountain goes, uh, if you plug in zero here, you get one sixth. But that's not really going to help us. Okay, so we have to find the area of this little region. So you see graphing it is really all of the work. It's all about graphing it carefully. So to find the area, you know, typically we draw a rectangle, and it's a vertical rectangle, so we do top minus bottom. So we're integrating from negative 1 to 1, although in this case, you can actually go from 0 to 1 and do half of the area and then multiply by 2, so that's something we could also consider as well. So we're going from negative 1 to 1, and it's top minus bottom. So the topmost function is f, so that's 1 over 6 parentheses 1 plus x squared minus and then the bottom most function is uh, g so 1 12th and x squared and then here we have our dx let's go ahead and do that that trick I suggested just to save us some some time so what, we'll, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find this area here and then multiply it by 2 and it should give us the whole area due to symmetry so the area is going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 sixth. I'm going to rewrite this in a nice way. 1 over 1 plus x squared minus 1 twelfth x squared. And don't forget the parentheses and the dx. So let's keep going. So this is equal to 2. Uh, let's see, I'm going to leave that outside. 1 sixth. This is a familiar formula. This is going to give us the arctangent function. So arctangent of x. And then here we can just use the power rule. So it's going to be x to the 3 over 3, but then you multiply 3 times 12. So that's going to be 36x cubed. Beautiful. And then we're going from 0 to 1. You see how convenient it is to have the 0. It's going to make things go away in the steps that follow. This is 2 bracket. So first we plug in the 1, so 1 sixth. Arctangent of 1 minus 1 over 36. And then minus, and then when you plug in 0, you get arctangent of 0, which is 0, and then 0 cubed, which is 0. So all of this is gone. So it all goes away. So this is equal to. 2 bracket 1 sixth. The arctangent of 1 is pi over 4. Just, just from memory, it's an easy one. Minus 1 over 36. This is 2 bracket pi over 24. Minus 1 over 36. I think at this point we could, well, I'll distribute the 2. So pi over 12, right? 2 over 24 is 12. Minus 1 over 18. Let's see what the decimal uh, form is for this. If you have pi over 12 minus 1 over 18, I got 0 0.206. That would be three decimals if you decide to use three decimals. 0 0.206. That would be the final uh, answer to this problem. I hope this video has been helpful.